So over the summer, the border crisis, the crisis of children, uh, refugees, not actually the, the numbers went down over the summer due to the weather, obviously, less people try to make that trip, obviously, June, July, and August, when the weather is so brutal, brutally hot. Um, but the issue got a lot of coverage earlier in the summer and in the spring. Um, and it was really disgusting how it was covered. I mean, just covered as a question of border security and actually used in a, another way to undermine profoundly needed immigration reform, criticized President Obama for his handling of it. Uh, he was way behind on it, uh, though he did attempt to make some steps to pervert, to preserve some opportunity at least uh, for what, again, is really a refugee question. This is the fundamental issue. You're talking about kids and adults, for that matter, fleeing um, profound violence in countries like Honduras and Nicaragua. And there's a new report that was put together by Human Rights Watch where they basically talk about how migrants who reported and, and, you know, and, and officials at the border are supposed to take these things seriously. If someone's at the border and they say, I have fled, uh, you know, Honduras because, as an example, this gang murdered my mother and I witnessed it and I'm afraid they're going to kill me. They're supposed to take that seriously. But according to these reports, of course, they didn't take it seriously. Once they were detained, U.S. immigration officials, uh, migrants told uh, uh, Human Rights Watch that border officials, quote, ignored their expressions of fear and removed them with no opportunity to have their claims examined. Others said border officials acknowledged hearing their expressions of fear but pressured them to abandon their claims. So they went to Honduras and they spoke to people. Uh, one Honduran man told Human Rights Watch that since he'd returned to Honduras, he hadn't left his sister's house and he hadn't told his four children that he was back in the country because it was too dangerous. On the rare occasion that he leaves his house, he wears a motorcycle helmet with a darkened visor and he told Human Rights Watch that the game MS-18 is, is, quote, nearly everywhere. Being locked up like this is ugly, but I think about my children all the time. I can't contact them or tell them I'm back, that I'm back in the country, though, because it's too dangerous. Alicia R., a deported woman uh, who said she moved from house to house because she was afraid of retaliation by gangs for witnessing the murder of her own mother. Quote, the people from the gangs don't have any heart, whether adults with adults or children. They don't have hearts. We buried my mother, and then I had to leave the house where we live because they came after us, and I left everything. You know who else doesn't have hearts? Our entire border policy that would send this woman and that man and children back to these environments. And the politicians who exploit delusional fears about the border, it is disgusting. And it's amusing to play some clip of some fucking moron talking about finding a, a, a Sharia towel on the border or the Quran or ISIS, Ebola, blah, blah, blah. Yes, that's very entertaining. But the direct consequence of this obscene, stupid, utterly delusional border policy is that we are sending people in countervalence to every human rights norm and even our own legal processes, back to torture, death, rape, and in the best case scenario, a terrified, marginalized existence where they go from home to home to avoid massacres by drug cartels, the violence of which absolutely matches ISIS. And we don't talk about these groups. We don't talk about how our policies in Latin America fueled them. We don't talk about how our criminal justice policies here, which have exported some of our most brutal criminals back to Central America, fuel them. We don't talk about our support for different regimes. We don't talk about the drug war. And I got to tell you, too, people and peers and people I hang out with and everybody else who's also in certain types of you know, scenes where they're enjoying themselves. Look, if you're doing cocaine, you're fueling these trades. Okay, and I don't have any moral judgment. You want to do whatever you want to do. 
You want to have fun? That's great. But if you have ever said to yourself that you're making a socially responsible choice to not shop at Walmart or something, you might want to think about buying this product because you're funding this. But more to the point and more fundamentally, these policies at the border are just obscene and sickening. And the next time you see some moron, some congressman, some, some advocate whining about danger at the border and all of this crap, you remember that the direct consequence of that is sending a woman back to hide out from a gang that murdered her mother in front of her. It's disgusting.